condemn the Saddam Hussein dictatorship in the most withering terms. A stance I have taken since around about the time you were an anti-Vietnam War demonstrator. I was an opponent of Saddam Hussein when British and American governments and businessmen were selling him guns and gas. I used to demonstrate outside the Iraqi embassy when British and American officials were going in and out doing commerce. You will see from the official parliamentary record, Hansard, from the 15th of March 1990 onwards, voluminous evidence that I have a rather better record of opposition to Saddam Hussein than you do and than any member of the British or American governments do. Now you say in this document, you quote a source, you have the gall to quote a source without ever having asked me if the allegation from the source was true, that I am, quote, the owner of a company which has made substantial profits from trading in Iraqi oil. Senator, I do not own any companies beyond a small company whose entire purpose, whose sole purpose, is to receive the income from my journalistic earnings from my employer, Associated Newspapers in London. I do not own a company that's been trading in Iraqi oil. And you had no business to carry a quotation utterly unsubstantiated and false, implying otherwise. Now, you have nothing on me, Senator, except my name on lists of names from Iraq, many of which have been drawn up after the installation of your puppet government in Baghdad. If you had any of the letters against me that you had against Zhirinovsky and even Pasqua, they would have been up there in your slideshow for the members of your committee today. You have my name on lists provided to you by the Dolfer inquiry, provided to him by the convicted bank robber and fraudster and con man Ahmed Chalabi, who many people, to their credit in your country, now realize played a decisive role in leading your country into the disaster in Iraq. There were 270 names on that list originally. That's somehow been filleted down to the names you chose to deal with in this committee. Some of the names on that committee included the former secretary to His Holiness Pope John Paul II, the former head of the African National Congress Presidential Office, and many others who had one defining characteristic in common. They all stood against the policy of sanctions and war which you vociferously prosecuted and which has led us to this disaster. You quote Mr. Taha Yassin Ramadan. Well, you have something on me. I've never met Mr. Taha Yassin Ramadan. Your subcommittee apparently has. But I do know that he's your prisoner. I believe he's in Abu Ghraib prison. I believe he's facing war crimes, charges, punishable by death. In these circumstances, knowing what the world knows about how you treat prisoners in Abu Ghraib prison, in Bagram Air Base, in Guantanamo Bay, including, I may say, British citizens being held in those places. I'm not sure how much credibility anyone would put on anything you managed to get from a prisoner in those circumstances. But you quote 13 words from Taha Yassin Ramadan, whom I have never met. If he said what he said, then he is wrong. And if you had any evidence that I had ever engaged in any actual oil transaction, if you had any evidence that anybody ever gave me any money, it would be before the public and before this commitment today. Because I agreed with your Mr. Greenblatt. Your Mr. Greenblatt was absolutely correct. What counts is not the names on the paper. 
What counts is where's the money, Senator? Who paid me hundreds of thousands of dollars of money? The answer to that is nobody. And if you had anybody who ever paid me a penny, you would have produced them here today. Now you refer at length to a company named in these documents as Eredio Petroleum. I say to you under oath here today, I have never heard of this company. I have never met anyone from this company. This company has never paid a penny to me. And I'll tell you something else. I can assure you that a radio petroleum has never paid a single penny to the Mariam Appeal campaign. Not a thin dime. I don't know who a radio petroleum are, but I dare say if you were to ask them, they would confirm that they have never met me or ever paid me a penny. Whilst I'm on that subject, who is this senior former regime official that you spoke to yesterday? Don't you think I have a right to know? Don't you think the committee and the public have a right to know who this senior former regime official you were quoting against me interviewed yesterday actually is? Now, one of the most serious of the mistakes that you have made in this set of documents is to be frank, such a schoolboy howler as to make a fool of the efforts that you have made. You assert on page 19, not once, but twice, that the documents that you're referring to cover a different period in time from the documents covered by the Daily Telegraph, which were the subject of a libel action won by me in the High Court in England late last year. You state that the Daily Telegraph article cited documents from 1992 and 1993, whilst you are dealing with documents dating from 2001. Senator, the Daily Telegraph's documents date identically to the documents that you are dealing with in your report here. None of the Daily Telegraph's documents dealt with a period of 1992-1993. I had never set foot in Iraq until late in 1993. Never in my life. There could possibly be no documents relating to oil for food matters in 1992-93, for the oil for food scheme did not exist at that time. And yet, you've allocated a full section of this document to claiming that your documents are from a different era to the Daily Telegraph documents when the opposite is true. Your documents and the Daily Telegraph documents deal with exactly the same period. But perhaps you were confusing the Daily Telegraph action with the Christian Science Monitor. The Christian Science Monitor did indeed publish on its front pages a set of allegations against me very similar to the ones that your committee have made. They did indeed rely on documents which started in 1992, 1993. These documents were unmasked by the Christian Science Monitor themselves as forgeries. Now, the neocon websites and newspapers in which you're such a hero, Senator, were all absolutely cock-a-hoop at the publication of the Christian Science Monitor documents. They were all absolutely convinced of their authenticity. They were all absolutely convinced that these documents showed me receiving 10 million dollars from the Saddam Hussein regime. And they were all lies. In the same week as the Daily Telegraph published their documents against me, the Christian Science Monitor published theirs, which turned out to be forgeries, 